Hey guys, today we will continue our lesson on rhombus, rectangle, and square. Today we will focus on the rectangle. A rectangle is a quadrilateral with four right angles. So the rectangle corollary, so something that logically follows that definition there, is that a quadrilateral is a rectangle if and only if it has four right angles angles. Okay, so if, if you know you're looking at a rectangle, you know it has four right angles. If you are looking at a quadrilateral with four right angles, you know it is a rectangle. So that means rectangle ABCD is a rectangle if and only if angles A, B, C, and D are all right angles. So each of these is 90 degrees. The rectangle diagonal theorem a parallelogram is a rectangle if and only if its diagonals are congruent. So this picture here, we know we're looking at a parallelogram because opposite sides are parallel, but we can also see with the tick marks that the diagonals are congruent to each other, and that makes it a rectangle. So ABCD is a rectangle if and only if diagonal AC is congruent to diagonal BD. Okay, so we're going to sketch a rectangle and list all the properties we know about it, and then we will start to find some values on a rectangle. So here is rectangle WXYZ. Okay, by definition of a rectangle, WXYZ. First, we need to state that it is a parallelogram. A rectangle is a type of parallelogram, and by definition, it has four right angles. Okay, so we have a parallelogram here, which means opposite sides are parallel, and it has four right angles. Okay, now because it is a type of parallelogram, it has all the properties of a parallelogram. So we'll name some of those properties. First of all, opposite sides are parallel, which we've already marked, and they are congruent. So W, Z, and X, Y are congruent. W, X, and Z, Y are congruent. Because it's a parallelogram, we also know that opposite angles are congruent, which is kind of already marked because I've got 90 degrees on all the angles. Opposites are 90, and then these opposites are also 90. We also know because it's a type of parallelogram that consecutive angles are supplementary. So any two angles next to each other must add up to 180 degrees. We also know because it is a type of parallelogram that diagonals bisect each other. Okay, so we'll draw in the diagonals. And these diagonals cut each other in half. We also know by the rectangle diagonal theorem that diagonals are congruent to each other. So not only do they bisect each other, but among these two diagonals, we have four little segments here that are congruent to each other. Okay, now let's use that information to find some values in a rectangle. First, we're actually wondering if this is a rectangle. Okay, so the frame that's shown here must be a rectangle given the measurements that we have. Can I assume it is a rectangle? So I know that opposite sides are congruent. Can I use that much information to assume 
that this is a rectangle? The answer is no. Okay, opposite sides congruent makes it a parallelogram. And that's good because a rectangle is a type of parallelogram, but with no right angles, we're not sure it is a rectangle. So what if you measure the diagonals? So you measure from here to here and from here to here. So you measure those two diagonals and you found that each diagonal is exactly 25 and 5 eighths inches. What can you conclude about the shape of a frame? Okay, with congruent diagonals, it is a rectangle. So anytime you want to know for sure that something that you've put together is indeed a rectangle, if you measure the diagonals and the diagonals are the same length, then you can guarantee that you have a rectangle, which then gives you the right angles that you would be looking for. Suppose the diagonals of the frame are not congruent. Can it still be a rectangle? And the answer is no. Diagonals of a rectangle are congruent. Okay, the theorem about rectangles diagonals says that uh, the quadrilateral is a rectangle if and only if diagonals are congruent. If diagonals are not congruent, it is not a rectangle. Find the value of x and y. Okay, now this figure is a parallelogram because opposite sides are parallel. There's a right angle here, and in a parallelogram, those angles right there, those consecutive angles must add up to 180 degrees, 90 and 90 makes 180 degrees, so that means 2x minus 1 is equal to 90. So if I add 1, I get 2x equals 91, and I can divide by 2 and get x equals 91 over 2, which is also 45 and 1 half. I could write my answer that way as well. In a parallelogram, opposite sides are also congruent. So that means that 5y minus 17 is equal to 3y plus 7. So I'll subtract 3y and I'll add 17 and get 2y equals 24. And 24 divided by 2 is 12. And on a rectangle W, X, Y, Z, we are going to find every angle measure and every segment length in this picture. Okay, so we have 50 degrees here, and because a rectangle is a parallelogram, these sides are parallel, which means their alternate interior angles are congruent, so I can say this is 50 degrees right here. Also in a rectangle, diagonals bisect each other, and they are congruent, so I know these four are all the same length, which means I am looking at isosceles triangles, four isosceles triangles, and in an isosceles triangle, the base angles are congruent, so this is 50 degrees, and this is 50 degrees. Okay, now there's a right angle here, so this angle is 90 degrees. 50 of it is here, which leaves 40 here. And 40 here, because this is an isosceles triangle. 
And then because alternate interior angles between parallel lines are congruent, I know this over here is 40 degrees, and this over here is 40 degrees. I know that the length of segment XZ is 12, which gives me 6 here and 6 here. And because these are congruent to these, 6 here and 6 here. Now all that's left is the four sides around the outside of this rectangle. Okay, now on this rectangle, the only length I was given is that the length of XZ is 12. So I am going to pull out this triangle right here, draw it separately over here, and this is X, Y, Z, on which XZ is 12, and here angle Z is 50 degrees. Okay, so now with that information, I can use sine, cosine, or tangent to find the missing sides. So I'll find side XY. That is the opposite leg, and 12 is the hypotenuse, opposite leg and hypotenuse. That is sine. Sine 50 degrees is to 1 as the opposite leg, xy, is to the hypotenuse, 12. And I can multiply this across, so I get xy is 12 times sine 50 degrees, Twelve sine fifty is nine point two. So x y is nine point two, which means that w z is also nine point two. Okay, now I will find this the adjacent leg, adjacent leg and hypotenuse. That is cosine. Cosine fifty degrees is to one as the adjacent leg z y is to the hypotenuse 12, and I'll multiply across. So zy is 12 cosine 50. 12 cosine 50 is 7.7. .7. So zy and wx are both 7.7. .7.